ओम असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शांति 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 ओम मे द डिवाइन लीडर्स फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टू लाइट फ्रॉम डेथ टू इमोर्टैलिटी ओम पीस 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 वेलकम टू द संडे सर्विस ऑफ वेदांत सोसाइटी ऑफ टोरंटो बीइंग लाइव telecasted live uh, web streamed on youtube from manitoba a small town of pinoa in manitoba not far from winnipeg so the today's uh, topic of uh, discussion is uh, swami vivekananda in america today is 3rd of july uh, 4th of july the day of american independence Swami Vivekananda chose to conclude his uh, leela in this world and he passed away on 2nd July 4th of July 1902 in Belurmat uh, India and uh, he loved uh, America his main work was done in America main work of preaching uh, and all his learning that, that he got in India from his guru from his shastras from the very land from the people that he served and absorbed and he all manifested and gave that to humanity uh, mostly through his hard work of uh, four and about four and a half years of work in america in the last 10 years of his life that was swami vivekananda's uh, love and his uh, setting of work his uh, gift to humanity was all set through america in an america so Swami Vivekananda's life in America has a very important role that we want to just remember today on uh, the occasion of Swami Vivekananda's um, merging in the infinite concluding his uh, human leela and uh, and choosing his 4th of July the American Independence Day as the day he want to be free from the body free from the limitations of uh, the body and which we call uh, his passing away or maha samadhi as we call so remembering that today's topic is vip swami vivekananda in america american lifestyle was so different and thought was so different from the orient and that we try to discuss how swami vivekananda an unknown person a monk of a quite different um, culture and appearance and dress uh, uh, how was he so wonderfully accepted lovingly recognized and uh, was allowed to exert so much influence in the thought uh, of america uh, so that was something very unique in the history of uh, spirituality so there is divine providence there divine plan all you know that because world wanted something new and uh, america was the original point from which it should spread the wisdom of the east has to spread all over the world to all mankind uh, so from here it started india produced nurtured stayed and the role of um, in in uh, 20th century it was uh, the role of uh, america to uh, to spread in 19th and 20th century uh, from here it should go so that's why it's very important to remember swami ji's uh, time in america uh, it's it was a not only a monk coming from india bringing some wisdom it was a huge explosion of wonderful and greatest and highest ideas of spirituality and about uh, religion about the true religion was said in such a wonderful language that it inspires us still today as it did in 1893 or uh, in in 1900s uh, through swami vivekananda's mouth when we read his works his lectures uh, in the pages or here uh, the explanation given by the monks and other scholars uh, it we feel so so inspired 
uh, that as if Swami is speaking to us. And not only speaking, it's inspiring us to change our thought, our life, our very approach to life uh, that came through Swami Vivekananda in America from Sri Ramakrishna. So, Swami Vivekananda, how did he come? About 129 years ago, on July 25, 1893, a dynamic modern day prophet arrived in Vancouver, Canada, by the ship Empress of India. So, Swamiji sailed on 31st of May, 1893, from Mumbai, that time called Bombay, and uh, he, and he um, was suggested to go by the um, Raja, or the King of uh, Mysore, and um, King of Khetri, and also King of Ramnath. Whoever Swamiji met, all great sevens, and who, whoever loved India and uh, Sanatana Dharma or ancient wisdom of India, uh, they wanted Swamiji to present the, in, the Eastern wisdom to the West at the Parliament of Religions. The news of Parliament of Religions going to happen in September in 1893 already reached the source of India. The, that time there was no um, uh, WhatsApp or phones uh, uh, so commonly done. Mobile phones were not there. But still the news as a big event has already had already gone in India. Parliament of Religions happened still. It all revived again in uh, 1993. Uh, after 100 years of Parliament of Religions. Second was held in 1993. But where is that news? Many people don't know, neither in America nor in India. But that time, somehow in that time, when there was no transformation boom, there was no information boom. But still people in India knew about the first ever Parliament of Religions. And they, when they saw and heard Swamiji, they wanted him to represent Hinduism uh, at the Parliament of Religions. So they all said, please go and attend that. We want you to speak and represent us in the World Forum. And uh, Swamiji mm, was hesitating whether to go or not, what they are saying, am I, mm, am I um, really needed to go? But he got two definite indications that he should go. And so his friends, admirers, everyone who knew about the Parliament of Religion, who heard Swamiji say, you must visit America. And uh, the king also offered to um, pay the tickets and the money and everything that needed. Uh, but he was still not fully sure, certain, whether it's divine ordination or it is uh, some uh, people just the uh, eagerness for me to go. He wanted everything to be done uh, as guided by the divine. He didn't do anything by himself. All his life, it seemed that uh, he was so pragmatic and so self-confident and did everything by his own will. Uh, he says, when you are born, make a mark. But for himself, he always was guided by the divine, guided by Sri Ramakrishna. And exactly that happened. He, When he was in uh, Kanyakumari, he saw that Sri Ramakrishna is beckoning him and asking him to go over the water to the west, uh, towards America. And that he was, uh, it was the vision to Sri Ramakrishna. It was not a dream, vision Sri Ramakrishna. Um, and the uh, Swami Vivekananda understood that as it is the divine, uh, divine um, order, divine command to go there. Still, little doubt was there. So, final approval has to happen from Holy Mother Sarada Devi. So, all money was collected and die time was done. Yet, he waited for. Mother Sarada Devi, Holy Mother's consent whether she should go or not. He wrote a postcard, he wrote a letter to Jairam Bhati. And the Holy Mother got that letter. You can imagine how many days it might to take from writing letter from Mumbai to uh, Jairam Bhati, a village in uh, West Bengal. But still it went and later Holy Mother uh, wrote back uh, that, yes, you should go, no rain. And uh, then Swami Vivekananda got that letter, and then there was no doubt whether he should go or not. He knew that it was divine plan. And then he came to U.S., America. So he's coming to the West. First, he didn't go to America or United States. But we know that from Mumbai, he sailed on May 31st, 1893. And uh, the ship was Peninsular. 
So he, the ship went through many ports because they have to land many ports. The first it went to Colombo in Sri Lanka, then Penang in Malaysia, Hong Kong. Then from Hong Kong, it went to Nagasaki in Japan. Then Nagasaki, then again, it went to another port called Kobe. From Kobe, Swamiji um, came uh, off, took off the boat and started land route. From Kobe, he went to Osaka, seeing the place in Japan. Osaka, and from there, he traveled to Kyoto. From Kyoto, he traveled to Tokyo, and he saw the Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese perfection, uh, and he liked it very much. He liked Japan. It impressed him very much that how the humanity had developed to such a perfection in uh, their attitude, behavior, humility, uh, knowledge, and um, punctuality. That was Swamiji impressed very much, and cleanliness of Japan. And from Tokyo, he finally went to Yokohama, a port, and at Yokohama, he took a ship. The ship's name was Empress of India. The ship was uh, a, a Pacific liner of a Canadian Railway Company, Canadian Pacific Railway. That Canadian company ship belonged to that uh, railway company would bring Swami Vivekananda and others like Tata was there, Jamsetji Tata was there in that from Yokohama to, 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 to the west. So first they sailed there from Yokohama. Uh, they departed at 3.40 p.m. Um, on July 14, 1893. And they, after about 12 days of uh, their sailing on Pacific, uh, the ship arrived uh, at Victoria in BC on July 25 at 9 a.m. Victoria is an island. Now it's uh, there is a the capital of British Columbia, uh, a province of uh, of Canada, um, and but this is an island. There the ship anchored for um, for quarantine and testing. About two hours the ship was there. It was quarantined. If some were um, contagiously uh, sick, they were um, they were taken out from the ship. But it was nothing happened. Anything to Swami Vivekananda. And after that, ship sailed to the continent of North America. And Swami Vivekananda arrived in the mainland, the continent, uh, on in, at Vancouver on July 25, the same day, at 7 p.m. in the evening. So that was his 25th July uh, at 7 p.m. Swamiji first arrived in the American continent or in Americas. In America, he arrived. So that's very important. And that uh, where he set his foot in America for the first time was Vancouver in Canada, the city of Vancouver. It is not comparable to the city of Vancouver that is now the sprawling, very vast city of um, very expensive, vast city of living many a place considered to be one of the best places in the world to live, best cities in the world to live. That time it was a small uh, port city, uh, Vancouver. And uh, Swamiji seems to be, um, we don't know that whether he stayed in the hotel or um, or not, but what our people do, those have done research, they say, um, he left um, Vancouver next morning. Um, he arrived at 25th July, 7 p.m. and left Vancouver on July 26 at 10.45 a.m. by Canadian Pacific Railway, who ran that ship. The ship also belonged to the same Canadian Pacific Railway Company. They also run the train from uh, there to, uh, to in, in, in Canada, and it went up to, up to the U.S. So that research shows he arrived in Winnipeg on July 28 at 10.45 p.m. after 60 hours of travel, through uh, the um, through the British Columbia and through the Rockies and finally and through the prairies of um, Canada um, uh, 
from the state of Saskatchewan, which was there at that time, and to the prairies, vast open flat fields uh, to, mm, to Winnipeg, uh, the central uh, Canada, the very, at the center, the heart of Canada, this Winnipeg, where I am uh, speaking today, very close to the city of Winnipeg. It is in the, at the center of uh, Canada, and it was a very important city uh, during Swamiji's time. And play, trains from uh, from Asia would come uh, by ship from Asia would come to Canada from Canada Canada by train to Winnipeg uh, in Canada and from here to the south to Chicago. That was the route how people from Asia traveled to United States. Um, so he arrived at that uh, in press. There is some that on thirty first um, July they said he arrived yesterday, which seems to be a little. Um, mistakenly printed or printed later on and the report was done yesterday that uh, researchers have said that it should be reported must have done it on 29th uh, but printed it was printed on the um, on the Winnipeg free press of the 31st of July on uh, July 29 afternoon after overnight stay in uh, Winnipeg perhaps in Winnipeg railway station he left for Chicago and arrived there after 30 hours of train journey and on July 30 evening. That is how Swamiji's travel to the America, where he gave so much to humanity. So that is his journey. And we know the story in America when he arrived on in July 30th. After that, he knew Parliament of Religion is quite far away. In 11th September, it's going to open. And also, it one had to register, and it was expensive, and uh, he had not registered. People have not said, given any letter to him that he is representing us. No organization has sent. So that was a little difficulty. Nobody thought it would be so complicated in India. Then he went to went. To, he met. He had met one um, one very uh, knowledgeable person. She was in um, journalist and literary person. Kate Sanborn, Catherine Sanborn. She he met her in the train in Canadian, in Canadian Pacific Railway train from Vancouver to Winnipeg. And uh, some there was a wonderful conversation. Immediately, Kate Sanborn found uh, this very special person, Swami Vivekananda, not, not an ordinary person. So she was so much impressed, and she said, "If you happen to need any help, you can contact me when you are in Chicago." And he contacted uh, Kate Sanborn and she arranged her going to Boston. We, we all know that. Uh, how that um, her meeting with Kate Sanborn in Canada was so helpful for Swami Vivekananda while he was living in America in, in the first few days of his stay, first few months of his stay. So from July and August, uh, July was over, August. Mm, so he saw the parliament of uh, this um, exposition, um, the Columbia, great Colombian exposition of uh, Marian on the occasion of 400 years of, uh, uh, of uh, the discovery of uh, India, of discovery of uh, America. And um, after having that, then he wanted to move to a place where it was less expensive, money was uh, Spending that he didn't bring a lot of money, he had brought only 187 87 uh, pound sterling. That was the money only he had, and dress was also very uh, not warm at all. And uh, it was quite cold in the ship itself. He, the kings gave him the uh, the silk dress to appear in the forum at the Parliament of Religions. But what about his stay? And for Swami Vivekananda coming from a tropical country, it was very cold in the North Pacific and also in the August was also sometimes it becomes cool. I find here in Winnipeg at, in the evening it gets um, very cool in the evening here. The person coming from Toronto uh, feels so cold in the month of um, July here uh, that we feel like, oh, why didn't I bring my jacket? Warm jacket would have been nice. Uh, so like that weather changes. Swamiji felt that. Though it was not very cold, but it was cool enough for uh, person coming from India to feel cold, in uh, though it was summertime. So this is how Swami Vivekananda came and arrived Chicago on July 30, 1893. In uh, July, um, he arrived in uh, Chicago 
in um, July 30th, 1893. So that is the thing that we know from the stories, how he traveled and when he arrived. Now, after that, Swamiji appeared at the Parliament of Religions. We all know how it was divinely ordained that he should meet uh, someone like Professor um, there in the, in the Boston, in Massachusetts, uh, the small, in a small um, village of uh, Anisquam. And there he wrote a letter to Swamiji about Swamiji and uh, requested the um, authorities in the Parliament of Religions to accept him because he is very learned and uh, he doesn't need any testimonial or any letter, and that his letter worked, and uh, Swamiji uh, was accepted uh, the one day before on 10th uh, of September for the Parliament religion, going to start on 11th September. Uh, and we all know the story how um, the Hill, as, um, Hill family accepted him and welcomed him, and all the story is all God-guided, Ramakrishna, directed and the Holy Mother protected uh, story is that uh, Swami Vivekananda who represented India as a whole was coming and he could not be sent out or could not go without completing his job. So Swamiji lived for about three years in the first tree from July 1893 to uh, mid of um, in mid uh, year uh, of um, like um, 1897, uh, 1896. So he was there, and uh, he in in 1896 he left America for uh, for Europe, and from there he came to India, arriving there in January 1897. So that was his um, his first trip. But in America, it was so important that he gave so many lectures. First, he was tagged wherever he spoke. His parliament, his lectures in Parliament of Religion were so popular and uh, so impressive that um, people after that wanted to hear more about uh, the wisdom of the of the Vedanta, and um, uh, and people were coming in huge number. All halls used to be packed. People used to be overflowed outside. And um, many um, prominent persons started li listening to him. How Swamiji became so uh, accepted and become so popular uh, in America, which is uh, so different in thought. Americans have their own culture, American way of life, the freedom they enjoyed. And they were never, uh, they never liked to say, believe in that, this. You have to accept this. They never liked that, uh, dictating them to live how to do. They, they just wanted people to present what they want to say and freedom to choose or not to choose. If it was acceptable to them, they would choose and they would hold on. The, uh, the strength of American mind, Swami Vivekananda said, that uh, they are very open to the new ideas. But you cannot ask that this alone is the right path. They were very open. That's why they liked Swamiji's uh, this saying very much. Um, that uh, this is uh, the Vedanta, which says um, all takes responsibility on you. And it says everything is given into you. And the goodness, the spirituality, the, um, the realization of the truth, uh, that is given into you and you are to explore and find out by yourself for the truth that is hidden you. So this idea touched their heart. Um, the Americans always wanted to find something new, something truth. And they knew Swami Vivekananda was telling the truth. And um, that's why when Swamiji came, there was so much of acceptance of his lecture at the Parliament of Religions, how people assembled there, some say 6,000, some say 7,000, how they all were so much impressed by his saying of uh, the little wisdom he gave there at that time. It was, a, it was the message, it was his personality, it was the right time, it was the divine will that all combined together. The way he presented the perfect English and the way the story he put um, and his appearance, his charming personality, all combined together, it had an uh, everlasting impact on the American minds. And 
and then it will go to the minds of all over the world. President Obama had visited the um, President of America, ex-President of America, the past President of America, Barack Obama, visited India in November 2010. He addressed at the Parliament of Religions and he said that Swami Vivekananda showed that instead of succumbing to division, he had shown that the strength of India is its embrace of all colors, all castes, all creeds. Holiness, purity, and charity are not exclusive possession of any church in the world, and that every system has produced men and women of exalted character. President Obama, he quoted these words of Swamiji's spoken at the Parliament of Religions, and he quoted that in the Indian Parliament in 2010. And Obama comes from Chicago and said, in my hometown, he came and spoke this in 1893. So even so much impression of uh, Swami Vivekananda um, by, its, by all uh, persons of all walks of life, at all the stages of life, right from the president of America to the humblest person. So all are influenced by Swami Vivekananda. They say the word yoga came with uh, Swami Vivekananda to America. And uh, though a little it came, it took the form of um, now Hatha Yoga, the physical exercise. Um, the, our ancient system of uh, keeping body and mind fit. In yoga, mind is a very important part. Body and mind fit. Ancient started much earlier in the very ancient time. Uh, prehistoric time it originated in India and the very word yoga came. The yoga is in the Vedas also, in the Gita we find yoga means union being together, together with our real self. That is the, that is the meaning of yoga and that uh, to have that you need a fit body and healthy mind. For that the yogic exercises or Hatha Yoga that are done. Now, hatha Yoga is so popular all over America, all over the world. We have International Yoga Day of just past uh, 21st June. We celebrated in many places in India and all over the world. Um, it was it's recognized by the United Nations as uh, the International Yoga Day. So that the word yoga came with Swami Vivekananda and became popular. And as the the physical exercise, it became popular later. Swami Vivekananda didn't teach the physical exercise in Rata Yoga. He taught the real yoga, real union of individual soul with the supreme soul. Our individual being with our true being. That is the real yoga uh, that Swami Vivekananda taught. Swami Vivekananda had the, what he gave in that um, about four and a half years that for, he was in in India, in, in the US, in America. One was all his complete works, mostly uh, we find are his from his lectures in America. Some are in Europe, mostly in England. Some are definitely in India, major part like lectures from Colombo to Almora. Others are his letters, which also written mostly from America. Those are so much inspiring. The letters he wrote to his brother disciples back in um, back in Kolkata and some to his disciples in South India, like Alasinga Perimal, Kidi, and all those. Uh, those are all inspiring to the Raja of Khetri. They are the minds of inspiration, how we should live and how we should work and what is our purpose of life. Um, what a man's purpose of life is in the world is to give to others, is to build others, is to think about others. So all that is inspire, inspiration we find in the letters of Swami Vivekananda. And um, that most of the, those letters are from America. And um, he found in 1894 itself, he found, he started finding an, uh, an organization. And before even Ramakrishna Mission was founded in 1897 in, um, in India, uh, Ramakrishna Mission and Worldwide Organization, he founded on 1st of May 1897. But he founded the Vedanta Society in 1894 within one year of his arrival to America and to preach the wisdom of Vedanta, which for the benefit of whole humanity. 
no other thought. It is all about doing good to others. Bahujana hitaya, bahujana sukhaya. That's why Swami Vivekananda's life was, and that's what Swami Vivekananda wants our life to be. And he wrote there over a hundred years ago. He wrote. Americans were really overtaken by surprise when Swamiji, a person from foreign land, they often called alien by Americans, he aroused and inspired them with the message of their innate divinity, innate divine power, the goodness, the beauty, the strength, the immortality that is in everyone. That how Swamiji not only spoke, he could make people feel that this is truth. People could trust the words of Swami Vivekananda and Swamiji said, now it is for you to explore, you to find out. This was very much to the akin to the American uh, culture or American way of life that he present something and give me the freedom to uh, find out. I have to work to find out. This left an indelible mark on America's spiritual development. What are the signs of that mark, that uh, indelible mark that left? Vedanta is in America to stay. It is there. It is flourishing. Centers coming up and flourishing. Swamiji from the Orient preaching an, a different message, an alien message in an often hostile environment. This is a considerable achievement. The people were not all welcoming. There were people who uh, found that his preaching of the true spirituality, true religion uh, had some impact on the selfish people uh, who were narrow-minded and who were making religion a business of earning some money by saying there is so much of uh, poverty, ignorance, um, and people are like savage, they live in India, and we have to give us money to train them, to make them civilized, they are uncivilized heathens. Like those people were preaching just to get money to spend and run their own income. And when they heard people, the intellect, intelligentsia and other common people heard the um, speech and uh, they knew about Swami Vivekananda, the product of India, and they thought if India can produce such a great person, and Swamiji said, religion is not the crying need of India. We are poor, no doubt, but spiritually, religiously, and as far as the wisdom is concerned, intellect is concerned, we are quite advanced. Perhaps, if not, um, perhaps more than you, at, at least the history says that our ancient wisdom cannot be compared with the ancient system, wisdom of the Europe, because Europe is a new land, new country with Europe and the West. Uh, India lived and thought for thousands of years, for 10,000 years perhaps. So it cannot be compared by seeing that Swamiji's wisdom and how he brought the ancient wisdom of India and presented in the current language, in the current way he presented in English to the English speaking people of America, they knew that Americans, what the propaganda was going on, and the Indians were uh, uncivilized and they were savage. But that is not true. They were just making false to just earn money. So people started um, started uh, making their donate donations for uh, those to those people less, and naturally those were uh, those are hostile to Swami Vivekananda. So among that, how uh, Swami Vivekananda's work became so success? Swamiji had to face hostility. It was not there. Hostility sometimes danger to his life. Um, once or twice it is recorded, other than recorded. There have been hostile person when a person from foreign land uh, becomes so famous, so popular, so accepted, who brings a new message, new thought in the thought world. So naturally there is opposition, always it is there. Socrates also had to feel, had to feel the hostility. Any other scientist also had to face the hostility. So that's how Swami Vivekananda naturally had to face the hostility. But Swamiji's courage was never given up and he on firm ground started Vedanta Society of New York in 1894, as early as 1894. And then he went to um, India in 1897, and then he started Ramakrishna Mission to spread the message of Sri Ramakrishna and Vedanta and to work for the uplift 
of the Indian society. Sir, as a means of their sadhana, he brought monks together and gave, you have to serve the Brahman manifested this this people, your brethren, your sisters and brothers in front of you who need your support not only in spiritual matter but in your other day-to-day matter in healthcare, in education, in running of orphanage, uh, in providing um, relief during time of uh, calamities, natural calamities. Um, you should do for your um, fellow brethren who are veritable manifestation of the divine whom you want to attain through your meditation and prayer and worship. They are here in the form of uh, destitutes and needy and the poor and illiterate and ignorant. You have to work for them. So that he started Ramakrishna Mission. And before, after, after starting Ramakrishna Mission, he again, his health was failing. After his too hard work for two years in the U.S., and from in 1893 to 1895, his health started deteriorating, is failing. But he still stayed on for one more year. And finally, he went to India to recuperate his health. He, there also he had to work. So much of uh, name, so much of prestige for India was given. No one else ever had so much uh, of uh, honor being showered. No king, no other celebrity of any field. But it was Swami Vivekananda, the monk, who was so much honored in India just because he brought the real face of India and presented to the whole world at America. And in 1899, he founded uh, the Vedanta Society of San Francisco. In lifetime, he founded two Vedanta societies in the West. He himself, in 1894, Vedanta Society of New York. In 1897, Vedanta Society in San Francisco. Now it is known as Vedanta Society of Northern California, San Francisco. So now that was Swamiji's one great contribution. But um, what happens in uh, when the new thought, new religion, new ideas come, people have a, a tendency to, um, to judge it, to find whether it is true or not, and most are, are not accepted, and after some years they collapse. Most new religious movements collapse within a single generation. However, Vedanta movement that started by Swami Vivekananda has established and have firm foundation and is today is more flourishing condition than it has ever been um, in the West all over the world. So in America, there are scores of Vedanta societies in almost every province and some every states and some states have more than one, like in California, you find many Vedanta societies uh, um, as a branch center of the Ramakrishna order. How did a non-indigenous religious tradition become a visible and successfully integrated presence in a predominantly Judeo-Christian um, country? That is so strange thing that we need to ponder on that. Swami Vivekananda's uh, contribution, it was not easy. Vivekananda's Prescription for life was simple. It was because of Vivekananda. Simple and perfectly American term, work and worship. That Swamiji said that an American caught this phrase, work and worship. Americans are hardworking, self-reliant people and they want to work. And also they have in their heart a feeling for God. They also want to have connection with God, want to worship God. And when Swamiji brought the wisdom and he said, work and worship can and must go together. It, they liked it uh, as the philosophy that they should hold on. That we want not only work to have our conditions improved, our society is improved in the open society as always it has been American society, but also there is a place for Worship, there is a place for divinity, there is a place for connecting with God. So this combined together, work and worship, uh, they brought, it was just to their liking in this, in this world. 
to the most of the Americans. Even uh, the American many uh, many churches in uh, in 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 the West in American um, continent uh, like in uh, in Canada or in America like United Church, um, they have very broad views about um, about this religion and spirituality, and they accept other views from other religions. And they believe in harmony of religions. And yet they are Christians, no doubt. But there have been such denominations of Christians. Um, and they accepted Swami Vivekananda at that time when he spoke the truth. They are open to the thought. The alien coming, bringing the quotations from a different book called Vedas. Uh, not only from the Bible. But when they found the message was so profound and the truth, they accepted the truth. And he said, yes, it can be integrated with our culture and with our thought and with our religion. All religions, as Swami Vivekananda said, is taking the humanity towards its best possibility. Its best possibility, as Swami Hiranganathanji often said, Vedanta is the science of human excellence. So is the spiritual science of human excellence, the spiritual thought that will make humanity, the perfect humanity is what we call Vedanta, all inclusive uh, philosophy and religion. That's what Vedanta is. Swamiji's, um, what was um, behind the success of Swami Vivekananda in America? Where he stayed and uh, where so many, um, he, he actually not only he was personally popular for by himself, he was popular for uh, the thought that he presented, the wisdom of the Vedas, the Vedanta that he offered. And uh, he offered in such a wonderful language, this ancient text and all this um, of, the, of the Upanishads in Sanskrit, he brought it and presented in such a beautiful and understandable English language. And the people uh, felt that, yes, it is true. It's wonderful. Humanity had. Uh, and it was not the property of some one country or one culture. It is the property of humanity. That's one thing that Swami Vivekananda emphasized. The Vedas and the Vedanta, whatever, wherever happens in humanity, anything great and beautiful that happens, it is not the property of that particular community or that particular nation. We all human beings are one. That's what the Vedanta said. The one Vasudha eva kutumbakam whole world is our family. And when if the world is our family, then how can we say this uh, thing is for only for one community, the teachings of any prophet, whatever is applicable universally, is the shared property of whole humanity. We have to take this religion and scriptures in that way. Then and if we can do that, then human society will uh, will progress in united, in a friendly, fraternity way. Yet we'll be practicing our own paths, comes through our tradition and enriching ourselves and enriching the whole world. So Swami Vivekananda brought that message of uh, the East and it put there. The one thing that what Swamiji was um, was so much accepted, popular, trusted, uh, loved. Loved is the word. Swamiji was personally loved by everyone. Tremendously loved. As a devotee loves God, Swami Vivekananda was loved by his friends and admirers in the same way. He was just, for what, what was the things? One was his magnetic personality. His, his personality was so attractive. Why it was so attractive? Not only the human, he was handsome, it was there, but many are more handsome people that they are not magnetic personality. His magnetic personality was his purity, was his love for all, was his absence of hatred and jealousy, was his overflowing love and compassion and kindness, his feeling of unity and oneness with everyone, his feeling of everyone as his brothers and sisters, everyone as his own. Vasudheva Kutumbakam that we speak through mouth, Swami Vivekananda felt and lived that idea. That's why everyone had no problem in accepting Swamiji. His personality was magnetic. Also, his message that he gave, message of divinity, was spellbinding. And it was being one with the Yankees, it all will happen. Because this message was so much taken that you can do yourself 
truth is within yourself. You have to explore out the truth and you will find that divine resides within you. All those, Jesus is in your heart. Like those things was very revolutionary at the time. Uh, and yet they accepted through their own experience. Many people didn't like to think that God lives above the cloud. It was irrational for them to believe. And yet they could not give up God at all. Totally. And uh, God was there. Some power was there. And some power just lives in the sky and uh, he just controls us uh, from their sky. It cannot be seen. Uh, that was a little, uh, not for every American to accept that. When Swamiji brought the idea that God, that only in, uh, being, lives not only above the sky, is not only transcendental, he very lives within your heart as your conscience, as your consciousness, and who illumines your intellect and mind and senses and your activity, very life force is the manifestation of that divinity that is within you. And that immortal, ever blissful, ever existing, everlasting reality, that is your real nature. When Swamiji brought this message of the Upanishads and told in such a beautiful, simple language, for Americans, it was it, it was a wonderful new message which was in their heart, but never anybody told that, never expressed, lying dormant, hidden somewhere might be there. It was in the American culture there. That's why they readily grasped this, this uh, idea of uh, divinity of soul, God residing within us. God is manifested as Jesus. Jesus manifests as the, all the goodness that we, that is within us, the fearlessness, the love, all that is Jesus. What Jesus represents, all that is compassion, forgiveness, love. That is the Jesus that is within us. So this type of speech by Swami Vivekananda, they touch the heart of Americans. So that's why Swami's work in America was so uh, successful, not only during his lifetime. It stayed. It grows now. How many centers have come after Swamiji left? He made only two centers. Now, after Swamiji, we know how Swami Swahanandaji could start centers in so many places. Uh, in, in almost every in every big cities, he tried to uh, have the centers. How this new centers coming up of the Vedanta, so so Vedanta centers, Vedanta societies. So this was all the Swami Vivekananda's work. And his message that he made so simple. And why they like that? Because Swami's magnetic personality, his very spill um, binding message, the way of his presentation, his lag command over the English language. Um, and they also Christians don't need to be. And his way that uh, proselytizing, we have not come here to convert you, to bring you to my thoughts and my fold, to make you my disciples and my students. Swamiji was never for that. He said, just I have a message I have to give you. It's up to you to take the message. It's nothing. I am nothing. He said clearly, I have a message for the West as Buddha had the message for the East. So it is a messengers, this prophet, that just bring the message and they leave you know, at our plate. And it's for us to take or not take. When we find it is so delicious for our thought and mind, we naturally grab that. That had happened. He was not for proselytizing, not for making guru and making disciples. But he wanted, of course, people to accept the thoughts, broad ideas of Vedanta and enrich their life. That's why he said, Vedanta, if you accept, a Christian should not become a Hindu or a Buddhist, should not become a Christian. But everyone should grow in their own religion and to reach and the perfection as taught by their scriptures in by their own religion. So when he said a Christian don't need to be Hindu, Buddhist not don't need to be become a Christian, uh, it was very much liked by the American uh, psychology and American liked that idea. No conversion, no proselytizing, no making more student disciple, no just earning money, nothing. There was Swamiji had no uh, any selfish ulterior motive. He definitely wanted people to, to have some, um, some funds for the good of India from where he was. But all these great thoughts arose there and people are so poor, America is so affluent. So he wanted uh, 
great wisdom, enriching wisdom from the East to come to America, the wealth, the work style, the rajas, the activity of American um, society, American civilization to go to, to the East, and then both will prosper. The humanity of the world will prosper. Whatever one lag, they will be fulfilled. That was Swamiji's idea in America. So Americans like this non-proselytizing, non-threatening invitation to open American hearts and minds to an ancient non-sectarian tradition of spirituality. It was very much they, they liked uh, this thing. So Swamiji's um, other contribution and one of the greatest contribution is his publishing four yogas. Uh, Swamiji gave lectures on um, bhakti and the dhyanam or meditation, on, on devotion and meditation, uh, on uh, the philosophy and also on the secret of work, how one should work which will make us free. It is not freedom from work, and but freedom in and through work. That is what the Karma Yoga is. And Swamiji wrote uh, two of his works, like uh, Raja Yoga and the Jnana Yoga he published uh, in America. So it became very popular. Raja Yoga, he also translated um, Patanjali Yoga Sutra and some lectures he edited and the book came during Swamiji's time itself and it was published in America from the lectures he gave mostly in America. Those two yoga that later were published after in, during his second visit were published Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga. These four yogas is is a very exceptional and very authentic contribution of Swami Vivekananda to the mankind. And that was though done in the America, but it was meant for the whole mankind. The words are already there, Raja Vidya, Raja Guhya Yoga, it is there in Bhakti Yoga, the word is there in, uh, in, in, in the Gita. But there, is, there never had been such a comprehensive book, what is meant by devotion, what is meant by selfless service, there are reference in the Gita explanation were also there. And later on, the Tilak and all that, uh, they wrote uh, about the um, Karma Yoga, Rahasya and all that. But Swamiji was the first to write elaborately about what these four yogas mean. And these four yogas as the path to, of spirituality to read the highest, to read the truth, was presented by Swami Vivekananda. And he said that you can reach God through by practicing only one. And he said, but the best will be if you combine all the four yogas in your life. The work, karma yoga, and the meditation, the dhyana yoga, radha yoga, and then devotion, uh, bhakti yoga, and the jnana yoga, the philosophy, tattva vichara, sadha sad vichara, this is Swami, this is Sri Ramakrishna, sadha sad vichara, always do what is real and what is unreal, what is true and what is untrue, what is everlasting, what is temporary, and hold on to what is true, what is everlasting, what is ever blissful, what is unchanging reality, that is called Brahman, that reality. Hold on to that. On the, Referring to that, on that reference only, this world exists on that. So, this world though temporary is the way to reach that permanent stage. So, utilize this world to reach to that permanent stage. So, practice yoga in this life and you will certain to reach, reach there. Swami Vivekananda is a great contribution, not only to, to the Hinduism, but for the whole mankind are that uh, those four books, and those four books were published first in America. That was his, um, that four and a half years, and great work, tremendous physical and mental stress that Swamiji did, the best part of his life, 10 years almost, uh, best part of those 10 years, four and a half years, he spent in America. Success of uh, Vedanta movement in America because of, um, and what are the signs of uh, that mark? Success of, okay, success of Vedanta movement in America because of substantial literary movement and public discourses throughout America. So that was another thing. He's, he appealed to the intelligentsia of, uh, of the U.S. Many noted person, they were all impressed 
and uh, when he, they heard the message of the Vedas from Swami Vivekananda. And um, among them were, uh, we know, uh, J.D. Schallinger, Leo Tolstoy, Nikola Tesla, Sarah Bernhardt, all celebrity and well-known people in the West, in America. They were very well known. And when they heard Swami Vivekananda's message, message of the is they had come through Swami Vivekananda, they accepted and understood. And we know that how later on after Swamiji, they all met Swami Vivekananda. Um, living Swamiji, they're all impressed by Swamiji. And later on, um, like um, Roma Rolla of France, how he read Swamiji after 30 years of uh, the Parliament of Religions. Swamiji had already passed away. And he says, I cannot touch the, his words through the printed pages without, without feeling a shock in my system. And how much shock that might have produced when they came out from the lips of the hero, lips of himself, in the living, burning, life glowing words when they came out. How much it would have impact would have come? Really, that impact had come, and that impact. Fortunately, they have not lost that impact. Swamiji's words in the printed books, or through someone who talks about Swamiji, is still that power is there, which cannot be found in any other words written. These are they are all impregnated with the force with the power of purity and spirituality that we feel when we hear or read through the pages. After reading for some time, if you do it with, con with the concentration, then reading stops. Then what happens? Then Swami Vivekananda starts speaking to you. You start hearing. Then you go on reading. You feel Swamiji is hearing. Something is entering into you. And uh, you are being transformed. The weak person is, is getting strength. The sleeping person has sat down and sitting person had stood up. Like that is the power of Swami Vivekananda. Energizing power, energy capsule, transforming power. That is Swami Vivekananda. And for that, we must be thankful to the land of America and where he, Swami, they, they understood, recognized Swamiji. If they would not recognize, uh, then Swamiji would not do that. They recognized, accepted the greatness of Swami Vivekananda and so that thought of Swami Vivekananda, Vedanta thought, they all exist, flourish, and still give so much solace and peace and strength to the people as they give to Madam Calvi, who thought of committing the giving of life. Heard Swami Vivekananda, life came. What committing and accepting death? I will live with all goodness that is in me. There is divine power that people feel still today. We know the story of Anna Hajare. If you read his story, how much work he did in, uh, in, in, in India. Just by reading a book of Swami Vivekananda, his whole life was transferred from life throwing in, uh, to giving up committing um, suicide to serving the society. All the transformation by reading a passage of Swami Vivekananda. Can you imagine what power that Swami just had? That power exists and all that was manifested in the great and free land of America. They all, the great celebrity and intellectuals, uh, they all found Vedanta to be more consoling. Vedanta offered a path to a personal relationship with God, to find God, to find peace. That Swami Vivekananda's presentation of Vedanta had that power. Vivekananda taught the Americans the highest strength of life. You are not your body. You are not your mind. You are spirit, immortal, infinite, everlasting, blissful. You are Atman. That message from the Vedas, from the Vedanta, he presented in very convincing way to, to the people of America. How could he do that? Because he knew that, because he experienced that, he realized divine prophet that he was. So the middle class and upper middle class intellectuals, broken hearted because of their work pressure and uh, not getting the life making thought and philosophy, all they realized that it's not just about doing, but being. Americans found 
this teaching irresistible. You have to not only do good and have your life comfortable, working very hard, but you have to be what you are. You have to be the blissful self that you are. Not only doing, doing, working, working, working and dying frustrated or tired, uh, not that, but work hard to make your life comfortable but that in the end of your life your life is you have to be what you are the divine spirit that you are that you have to find your spirituality they also heard from swamiji that god isn't capricious tyrant living in heaven and orders us what to do but rather an idea a power, God is an idea, God is a power that resides already in the human heart. Each soul is potentially divine. And he said, Vedanta is experiential. It is practical. It is empirical. You can find the truths of Vedanta in your own life. And Americans like this very much, that we can Practice, you can experience the truth of Vedanta, the immortality of the self. We can transcend the fear of death and reach that immortality through our living in the world, through this philosophy and through this action and through this love of God. We can reach that state of um, extreme, um, that state of permanent bliss, immortal bliss that Swamiji said in the Raja Yoga, that beautiful summary of religion, summary of Vedanta, beautiful, each soul is potentially divine. Is Do it either by work or worship, by, by philosophy or by psychic control, by one or all of these and be free. That is the whole of religion. That is the thing. Practice the yogas, Make yourself free from ignorance and live in this life like a jivan mukta, a free soul who is in connection with the with the with the one supreme soul. And that connection, that yoga, be a yogi, the smart yogi, bhavajuna, says Sri Krishna. Swami Vivekananda also said the same thing like the Gita, but he said in these words, you can work it out, you can experience the truth of the Vedanta, that you are immortal, blissful self, you are not this physical body, you can experience that, Swami Vivekananda said, and people tried to find out, that's how his work in America for about four and a half years is ever staying, everlasting, inspiring the people, not only in Chicago or New York, Boston or those all or California, but not only in America, but throughout the world, that huge tree that was planted in Chicago, that became enormous huge tree that become, it will still grow. People of all faiths all will come under the shade of it. As Jesus said, Oh, you are tired and wearied. Come to me and I will give you solace and peace. Like that, the Vedanta, because he was, whoever says that and does that is Vedanta for us. So we, that Vedanta, which is represented by Jesus and by Sri Ramakrishna, which is represented by all the great prophets and incarnations of God, was represented by Swami Vivekananda, by Buddha, and was represented in our time by Swami Vivekananda. And he he just was manifested. Some say it's the manifestation of the Vivekananda who was prepared by Sri Ramakrishna and is manifested in America. And on, the, on this day of American, just um, the um, eve of American Independence Day of um, on tomorrow, it's 4th of July. I was so happy to um, give the idea about uh, Swami Vivekananda's work in America. How great was the work of a prophet for a little time, but so enormous impact and giving all peace and solace, hope and happiness. And ultimately, if we could live up to that, what Swamiji taught, we will attain immortality in this very life and be freed from all fear, all ignorance, and we will have a successful, we will say, my life has been successful. I have realized the truth. 
and all glory to Swami Vivekananda and his gift to us, to the mankind, while he was in America. Thank you very much. Now, with closing chants, uh, I would like to conclude today's Sunday service from Pinawa, Manitoba, not far from Winnipeg. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu Jananim Saradam Devim Ram Krishnam Jagat Gurum Pad Padme Tayo Shritva Pranamami Muhurmu Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Ji Ki Jai Jai Mahamai Ki Jai Jai Shami Ji Maharaj Ji Ki Jai Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jai Bhagavan Buddha Ki Jai Jai Isha Musha Ki Jai Sarvas Taratudur Rani Sarvo Bhadrani Pashatu Sarvasad Buddhi Mapnotu Sarvas Sarvatra Nandatu Hari Om Tatsat May all be freed from dangers. May all realize what is good. May all be actuated by noble thoughts. May all rejoice everywhere. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Next uh, Sunday, we will. Um, I will be in Toronto, and we'll have uh, in-person uh, Sunday service at eleven o'clock Eastern uh, Daylight Saving Time. Thank you. <laughs>